Good morning. I hope everything's great in your life today and that this is the beginning of a great week for you. It's a joy to be able just to meet with you in this way and, and talk about some things in God's Holy Word. One of the amazing things about Scripture is that it just meets us where we are and deals with the life as we live it all the time. If someone reads the Bible and thinks to themselves, oh, this is just about the past and it's old and doesn't have anything to do with me, you're just not reading it correctly because it's the most practical book that's ever been written. And it deals with, with life and our situation all the time. I want to think with you about a, a very intriguing verse in the Bible. In Galatians chapter 6, Paul has, has been pleading with the Christians in Galatia because they, they've allowed some false teachers to enter in among them. And, and are convincing many of the people that were Gentiles that they needed to be circumcised and, and become proselytes to the Jewish religion in order to really be right with God. And, and Paul has tried to explain to them, when you go back under that law and practice things like circumcision, there's no, no value at all. As a matter of fact, he said, if you walk in that way, you fall from grace in Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 4. By the way, if someone tries to tell you there's no way anyone can fall from grace, they might ought to go back and read Galatians again because people there were falling from grace and had begun to make laws where God hadn't made any at all. And, and Paul pleads with them, in essence, to build your life around the cross of Christ. I've been crucified with Christ, he says, yet I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live through faith in him that loved me and gave himself up for me. That's my way to live, Paul says as that child of God today. And, and he'll say later in chapter 6, God forbid that I should glory except in the cross of the Lord Jesus, by which the world is crucified to me and out of the world. But it's right after that, right at the end of the book, that he makes a statement that I want to think with you about for a little bit. He says down in verse number 17, From now on, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear in my body the marks of Jesus. Now I wonder, Paul, what do you mean? What are these marks of the Lord Jesus? that you bear in your body. And so you're saying to these false teachers and, and to those that are trying to make laws where God didn't make any, leave me alone. I, I bear in my body the marks of Jesus. I think he's talking about the physical marks the scars where he has been beaten over and over again, the scars where he was stoned and left for dead, the scars of, of being shipwrecked and, and just having to make his way. His body is full of scars from, from all kinds of things that he's gone through in his service unto God, his commitment to the Lord, his work as an apostle of Jesus Christ. And so he said, listen, I, I have these marks all over me. You can look at my face and see the scar where a rock hit me. You, you can look at my back or my arms or my hands and see the scars, but not only of the stones, but 
of the stripes where I've been beaten. I bear in my body the marks of Jesus. Let me ask you something. Do you bear the marks of Jesus in your life? Can, can I see in you the scars where you've gone through things and living for the Lord? I'm afraid too often in our day we, we get the idea that if I if I live for Christ, it's going to mean I don't have any problems or I don't have any scars. But no, living that committed life means that I'm going to have some scars of where I have served and gone through. Those scars may not be physical. They may be spiritual. They may be emotional. They may be dealing with the hurts and the problems that we've gone through. But when we live the life God wants us to live, we will bear in our body those marks. Paul said, leave me alone. I have the marks of Jesus in my life.